Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sports Design School. Now over the last few weeks, I've had several people reach out to me about a specific style of sports design. And it's actually the style that they're putting out at the University of Alabama. Alabama's graphics design team is super sharp and they have kind of a unique approach to a lot of their designs. And so several of you have reached out and said, hey, can you break down uh, this style of graphic? And so here I have this Mac Jones Heisman design. Unfortunately, I did this design before the Heisman Trophy Award show back in, I think it was like last week. And Mac Jones, spoiler alert, did not win the Heisman Trophy. But regardless, we're gonna be breaking down this Mac Jones University of Alabama design and showing you each layer step by step and how you can recreate this look on your own and of course we'll be putting the PSD down in the description for you to download if you'd like to so make sure you scroll down and check that out if that's something you're interested in um, if you're enjoying our channel so far enjoying our PSDs that we're giving away make sure you drop a like on this video to help get this channel in front of more people and spread the sports design school message but I'm just gonna dive straight into this design uh, and turn off kind of this overlaying layer. And you can see here, this is really the essence of the design itself. Um, and then it's all about blending, color correction, uh, text, and things like that. So pretty simple to do. So you can see we have three main elements here. We have this textured background, we have this Heisman Trophy cutout, and then this front cutout. And when we turn those things into this type of design, super easy to do. So we're just going to start, I'm going to turn off this and turn off that. So now we just have our main Mac Jones cutout and I'm going to show you what effects I applied to this cutout. So to start off, I, I turned on a camera raw filter to bring in more detail into the cutout. You can do that of course by hitting filter, camera raw filter. And my settings for that, I simply went through. Here, I'll double click on this one so we can see. I simply went through and turned up the exposure just a tad and turned up the clarity a good bit. Now, of course, you can go through and play through all of these settings like shadows, highlights, contrast, if you'd like on your own time. But for now, I just turned up the clarity. And then the next thing I did is I added a high pass overlay to really bring out some more detail in this image. I have my fill set to 21. Of course, if you don't know how to do this, you just simply duplicate your image, hit filter, other, and then high pass. Now that'll bring up this kind of weird gray mixture kind of overlay. And we're just gonna hit okay and set our blending mode right here to overlay. And you can see that really brings out some detail in our image. And of course, you can turn down your fill to get it to about where you like it. So I think I had it originally at like 21. So not a super over the top effect, but just something to really enhance the detail in your cutout. Perfect. So that's that so far. Now let's talk about the next part of our image, which is the Heisman Trophy in the background. So as you can see, all I did is searched Heisman Trophy on Google uh, and I just found this particular image right here and then if we we'll go back to our original you can see there's just a little bit of a fade out right here a little bit of a gradient at the bottom and that's actually super easy to achieve I also put it in black and white so I'm going to show you how to do both of those things so here you can see I added a camera raw filter as well just to bring out some clarity but all I did was add a black and white adjustment filter on top, which you can do by just going and hitting black and white in your adjustments tab, and that'll pop up a black and white filter. And the next thing we can do to get that kind of gradient transparent effect is super easy to do. What we're gonna do is click on this flag right here, the add layer mask button at the bottom of your layers tab. And that'll bring this white kind of rectangle, I guess it's a rectangle technically, uh, over to the right of your icon on your layer. And so you can see this entire rectangle is in white. So what we're gonna do is hit G on our keyboard to bring up our gradient tool. Don't worry if you hit G on your keyboard and the paint bucket tool pops up, just hold and click on it until you get to the gradient tool. 
A couple other house cleaning things we're going to want to make sure is this icon right here. We're going to double click and make sure it's on black. It's just like complete black, no color, no anything like that. And then we're also going to go up here on our gradient tool and click and make sure our, our gradient goes from black to transparent like you can see right here. Now that we have those things done, we actually we do need to check one more thing. We need to make sure we're on a linear gradient. Not any of these other gradients because those will produce different effects. You'll see why here in a second. So what I'm going to do is click with my gradient tool selected and you can see we're selecting this white rectangle right here. So I'm just going to click, hold shift to make a straight line and drag up. And you can see we're creating a gradient in this icon. Everywhere where there's black, our image is going to disappear. Everywhere where there's gray, the opacity is going to be kind of in between, maybe in 50 or 60. And then everywhere where it's white, our image will be fully revealed. So I'm just going to keep on dragging up until I get the image that I want, or the effect that I want. And so you can see that is just about the same. That looks pretty good to me. And all we did was just create our layer mask and then use our gradient tool to kind of have that fade out effect. I'll show you if I get rid of Mac Jones what that looks like. And now with him back in there. Pretty simple to do. Now the next part of my image I want to break down are the shadows for Mac Jones feet. And shadows are a super important part of design because that's what connects your design to the elements around it, or your cutouts to the elements around it. So you can see here I have just two cutout layers, and I'll show you how I did them um, step by step. So you can see I have just two layers, one for his foot, and then one just like that. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new layer, hit B on my keyboard to bring up my brush tool, and then I'm going to go and flatten out my brush just like this. Make sure you have the soft round brush selected. It's literally the most basic brush. It's pre-installed in Photoshop already, so you should have that. But I, like I said, I'm just going to pinch this down kind of like that. We can play with the size. That's too big. Also too big. Until we find something that we like. Let's just type in 900. That looks pretty good to me. We're also going to make sure this icon is set to black again because we're doing shadows. We don't want any other color. And I'm just going to click just like that. I might flatten it out just a little bit more just to make sure we have like a nice flat shadow. Just like that. You can see my flow on my brush is down to 56%. What flow is, it allows you to kind of manipulate how um, heavy you apply the brush and kind of have more control over that. If that didn't make any sense, don't worry about it. Just make sure your brush is set to 56%. We can play with our fill right here, just like that. Kind of position it wherever we want to, maybe a little bit more left. And then again, I just created a new layer, B. And then this time I made my brush smaller. And just like that, we have our brushes. So as you can see, that's pretty simple to do. And you can see we already have a pretty solid part of our design. I think I also added a black and white adjustment layer to the cutout, because I think that's just kind of how Alabama does it for a lot of these designs. I really love the way like a solid white background looks when applied to when you have like a black and white cutout over it. It just looks super clean in my opinion. So we're doing pretty good so far. Let's just check in and see how we are doing. We have a couple more housekeeping things that we want to do, but first I'm going to add this little stripe detail in the background. Now you can see I have this stripe right here that's kind of subtly in the background. What it is is it's just a halftone texture that I found on like Creative Market or something. Um, and then I just set my blending mode to soft light, which is perfect for this design. And then what I wanted to do is kind of, I'm gonna create a new layer, and I wanted to recreate these stripes using the pen tool. It's actually super easy to do. 
So what we're going to do is hit P on our keyboard to bring up the pen tool. You can see it right here. And I'm just going to make sure I have a new layer selected. And then following the outline of my stripes, I'm just going to click. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but roughly recreate the same stripes that we did before. You can see this is pretty easy to do. I'm just kind of winding back and forth on my design. Now that we have that, we're just going to click, 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 and then finish our design. We're going to hit selection now and hit OK. And you can see we have selected these stripes just like that. Now what I'm going to do is go over to this button right here and hit solid color. And then just make sure we have like a light gray selected. So what we did is just created a <clears throat> we created a solid color in this here let me turn this off. A solid color in this area. And everywhere that the white on our rectangle is showing up, that's where our solid color will show up and everywhere where it's black, it will not show up. What we can then do is reveal our halftone textures and then apply it as a clipping mask. And you can see we are limited to just those areas to have that stripe texture effect. So now we are doing pretty good with that. A couple more house cleaning things on this design. We have these, we have these two rectangles. Super easy to do. So what we're going to do is just create one rectangle just like that. I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do that, but if not, I'm going to go over and hit my rectangle tool and just click and drag. It looks like I have stroke on for this one. I don't actually want that. But like I said, just a simple rectangle just like that. And then what I did for this rectangle is pretty cool. Um, so I just have a, I think it's just a white rectangle just like that. And then what I did for this design is I wanted this herringbone texture that Alabama uses. So I think I just Googled um, like herringbone pattern. I'm, no, it's hound's tooth. I'm sorry, not herringbone. Uh, hound's tooth pattern. And I found this particular pattern and I just clicked it and dragged it into my image just like that. And then there's a little bit of a motion blur on it um, to get that effect because normally if you were just to type in like hound's tooth pattern, it would just be a normal pattern. Um, you can go over and hit filter, blur, motion blur. And what that will allow you to do is just like add some motion blur to your pattern. Um, and that's all I really did for that. And then I had it as a clipping mask onto the white rectangle that we created. So, so far the rectangles, all we've done, created one rectangle and then another rectangle, dragged in this kind of clipping mask or this pattern. Um, and then added it as a clipping mask to our design. I also believe I had this set to multiply. And why did I set that to multiply? Let me explain. So our background is, or our rectangle is white. And so we want to make sure our white like doesn't show up because that's not how Alabama does it. They have it to where it's just the pattern overlay. And so when you change your blending mode to multiply, it gets rid of all the white parts of that particular layer. So when we set it to multiply, all the white parts of our pattern are removed and we just have our hound's tooth pattern overlay. That's looking pretty great so far. So now let's check in and see how we're doing. We're getting pretty close so far. Things are looking pretty good. So we just have the text at this point. Um, and for the text, I just did a couple of things. For my actual like Heisman text, I'm using this font called Dharma Gothic. It's a font that we covered in our Best Free Fonts Part 2 video. I'll be sure to put a link in the description to that if you want to check that out after watching this video. But Dharma Gothic is an awesome font. I also just have it set to italic. But I highly recommend checking out that font. And then I also added a drop shadow. No, just kidding. I don't want a drop shadow. I'm just going to leave it how it is. So we have our Heisman text just like that. And then a couple more things. We have our Mac Jones text down here at the bottom. I just typed in Mac Jones 
2020 Heisman Trophy finalist. And my fonts for that, if you want to see, is a font called, well, BW Modelica. And then I think this font is also BW Modelica. Um, so this one's just extra bold, and then this one is regular. And so those are pretty simple to do. It's just nice when you have like a clean font like that, and then you can kind of make it small, and it adds a nice detail to your design. And then we added the Alabama logo and the Nike logo. So I did a couple of things for that. I just went to sportslogos.net and looked up the Alabama logo, and I just dragged it in. I also added a color overlay because it looks like their shade of red and my shade of red. Um, just kind of don't match a little bit, so I dragged it in and changed it to match the rest of the design. And then Alabama does this thing where they put a plus in between their logo and the Nike logo. That's like their way of doing it. Um, some schools divide it with like a line. Some schools just put the logo and the Nike logo side by side. Alabama always does a plus for some reason. And again, this is that BW Medelica font. So if you're interested in, I mean, really it's just a plus, so so many different fonts will look exactly the same so it doesn't really matter for this particular thing and then I just googled Nike logo and I have my Nike logo right here so let me zoom back out so you can see the fullness of our design let me make sure I just double or <laughs> I covered every layer but yeah guys that's it I hope you enjoyed this video I have so many awesome videos coming very soon 2021 is gonna be an awesome year including I know some of you guys have been begging for jersey swap tutorials and so we're gonna have part one of our jersey swap tutorial series here very soon so make sure you stay tuned for that um, other than that leave a comment down in the comments if you have anything you want to see from us soon uh, follow us on instagram if you're not already and please 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 make sure you subscribe to our channel that is a huge help you guys don't even understand but we're well over a thousand subscribers now so thank you guys so much for that stay tuned for more videos here very very soon